Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. As always, uh, my name is Christopher Brown. Today's guest is Keeping the Light author, David Musser. I was about to pronounce it wrong, but we just did talk about it in the pre-interview that it's Musser. David, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the things that uh, I, I'm enjoying getting the word out, you know, about the book, but also getting the word out, you know, about how different indie authors and stuff like that can, can get started because self-publishing is one of the things where, you know, th there wasn't a manual in school for it, if you will. <laughs> Well, and that's that's exactly why we want to have you on is because uh, your book was independently published. It is a, an amazing book. I've uh, I've listened to it via Audible, uh, which we'll be talking about later on in the show as well. But uh, just to give you a little heads up, I listened to the first 12 chapters. I did not want to listen to the end of it because I did not want to give away most of it. So if, yeah. if something does happen and I give away part of it, I don't want to give away the ending. So it is a, a reason why I do this to all my authors that I have on my show. I listen, <laughs> I, I, I listen to most of it, but not all of it. I'm the anti Larry King in that way. But David, my first question to you and to all my authors that, that I have on the show is, where does writing come for from you? Well, I should say the voice is in my head, but you know, there, there, there might be some people with white coats coming, coming through the door any minute, but uh, it, it's something where, you know, a while back, I, I thought my daughter might be dyslexic, right? And I've always been dyslexic, told I was dyslexic and all that stuff since I was a little kid. I, I can see backwards, write backwards, that kind of stuff. So I did a lot of research on dyslexia that I'd n never done in the first 50 years of my life. And, uh, and so I, I'm reading things about it. And luckily, you know, my, my, my daughter did not have it. So, so that was nice. Uh, it was a poor teacher, <laughs> but, but that, that's another discussion. Uh, but, it, but as far as dyslexia goes, one of the things with it is it says that some people will actually have conversations over and over again in their head, even you know mapping out the whole everything that happens, and so when they're when you're having a conversation with somebody that has dyslexia, they might have had that same conversation with you before and wonder why you haven't caught up yet. So, so I find that for myself, you know, over the years, I've told myself a lot of these stories. And sort of, you know, I was into D and D and things like that. So I sort of made up worlds and was used to that. So for me, I, I think a lot of it comes from that and just, you know, being being more of an introvert. Do writers have to have a imaginative uh, uh, mind? Uh, listening to the book uh, uh, Keeping the Light, uh, I can tell that you sat down and you kept coming up with great character development, great story development. Does, do authors need to have that when before they sit down and have a story that they want to write out? Or for you, for writing Keeping the Light, was it just natural and sort of the words flew out of your hands? There, there's a couple schools of thought on that. Uh, and it was one of the things that my editor, who, who is, is just, just wonderful and amazing, uh, you know, Megan Anderson, she's, she's my cousin as well, but she agreed to be my editor. Uh, she's taught me a lot about different types of writing. And some writers, you know, they plan an outline and here's what the story is going to be about. Here's where it's going to go. And it's, it's, it's very rigid and structured. And here's what's going to be in the different chapters. And, and they're following, you know, different formulas. And that's not how I write. <laughs> So, so, so when, when I write, I, I sit down in front of the computer and, and I start typing a story and, and where the story goes, I don't know. Really? And, yeah. In fact, I've found that if I write the ending earlier, or if I even guess on what the ending's going to be, sometimes I lose interest in the story and I can't write it. And it, and it's, and it's been something that that's, I've been that way all, all of my life. And, and so I was trying early on in life to write as they say you should write, right? The structure and all that good stuff. And when I just started writing and, 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 and not worrying about the structure, it, things work much better for me. So, so the moral of that story for everyone is do what works for you. Don't worry about what they say with the quotes around the word they, right? So. Being an, uh, 
independent author can be challenging in itself. A, even to get a book published uh, by yourself as an independent author or even published by one of the quote unquote big publishers um, can be challenging. Uh, keep in the light. Is there a story behind how it got published or is there a moment when you said, okay, the big publishers aren't the right avenue for me. I think I need to do it independently. How did that come about as an independent publisher? You know, that's, that's, that's an excellent question. So for me, the way it happened was, uh, you know, everything locked down with Corvid, right? And, and everybody shut in, you can't go out. And, and at the time I'd finally made my, you know, almost a full year back in the gym. So I was, I was feeling good about being able to work out and all that stuff. So, so then the world shut down on me and I was talking to my cousin who uh, she, she's uh, written our family genealogy. She wrote a cookbook and some other things. And we were, we were just joking about different stories, you know, ghost stories from, from our family. And one of the things that, uh, you know, my mom had 13 brothers and sisters. So, so very, very large family, lots of different stories, you know, an Irish background, if you will. And so for that, we were just joking about different stories saying we should write, write a book about the different ghost stories. And I started telling her things and, and I told her, you know, something had happened to me and we can get into that more later. But basically I said, you know, I've always wanted to write a book myself. I just lack one, one thing. <laughs> And she's like, what's that? I'm like, talent in the English language. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so she, uh, she took on the challenge about being my editor. And, and it's something that she, uh, she said she'd love to do it. And it's, it's just been a labor of love. And so as, as I was writing it, you know, and we'll get into more of the process later as well. Uh, but when I was writing it, you know, I, I said, I'm, I'm not going to worry about trying to get somebody else to publish this. You know, I know enough about computers and technology. I'm just going to go ahead and, and publish this myself. So at the very onset of it, you know, my goal was to, to have a book that I can print out and, and, you know, or have it printed by Amazon and, and have it on Audible and all that good stuff. And, and right now, as you can see, I'm, I'm holding it in my hands. I know the viewers can't see, but, but, but I am holding a book in my hand. It has my name on it. <laughs> as the author so, so it's, it's, it's all good uh, and it's not you know I promise you it's not a Stephen King book where I just you know scratched, scratched out King and wrote Musser <laughs> we live in a world that is so heavily relied upon large organizations to publish like uh, like we've said with like penguin house and all these other i i honestly don't know all the other ones because i've only had independent uh, publishers on my show and you're my second um was it daunting to think okay i have a story to tell i have a story that i want to put out there is it going to get the publicity that if i would have went the traditional route would have gotten or are you comfortable with the fact that you know what i'm doing it my way i'm doing it the way that i want to do it i want to put it out there i want to do it and i want to get the revenues i don't want to pay someone else to get the revenues i want to get the revenues so take me through that process of actually saying you can you know what you, you said it beforehand i'm going to publish this myself it's a big challenge and it, you undertook it take me through that process of actually going okay i've got the book now now i'm going to publish yeah, and, and, and the funniest part of that is that if I had known the things that I didn't know, you know, I, I might have tried the other way first, right? You know, just, yeah. just in all honesty, I might have just said, you know, I'm going to send this out and, you know, maybe it gets rejected, maybe it gets approved. Uh, so I'm kind of glad I didn't know it. And then now for anybody else who's thinking of going indie, don't, don't get scared. I'm going to tell some things here that, that'll help you. <laughs> and, and so, so you'll know these things, but, but for me, it was one where, you know, the writing of the book, you know, was actually some of the easiest stuff I had to do, you know, cause I had a story in my head. Uh, the story was loosely based on something that happened to me as a child. And, and it was something that, you know, it just all fit together. And as you said, there's character development and stuff like that. A lot of that was, was people I knew. You know, the one grandfather in there, that was my next door neighbor. And, you know, his, the, my, the favorite thing he used to say to me all the time when he was out there mowing, he would mow it until rocks were flying out of the ground. And he's like, I'm going to kill this grass or it's going to kill me. <laughs> and so, you know, he, he, 
<laughs> and, and so, so, so I had, you know, wonderful people like that in my life that I could base some of these characters off of. So, so then when it came to the publishing part, I'm, I'm like, when, well, you know, I don't, I don't have time to, to put all this stuff and all this time and effort into the, to the book itself and then give it to somebody else only to be rejected or them saying, well, Hey, you need to rewrite all of this and it would be good. And so, so I went down the indie route and, and so when you first start to self publish, you know, Amazon's just the easiest place to go now. Yes, they do take a cut, but that's the easiest place to go. Uh, they have their KDP publishing and you go there, you upload your manuscript, and then you have to describe your book. <laughs> so, so you might think that's an easy thing, but you know, I, I wrote the book, but now I have to describe it in how many characters <laughs> and, and where do I start describing it? So I've adjusted that description several times and I'm still not happy with it, but, <laughs> but it, it's one of, that's where the start of the issues happened. <laughs> and and then, then it's okay. I need a cover for the book. Well, I've always been great at photography, right? I, I've, I've just, in fact, I wanted to be a photographer when I grew up, but my mom wouldn't let me. So it was, it was, you know, photography. Luckily, she she had the right idea that that you know photographers have been replaced in a lot of ways, unfortunately, by everybody having a cell phone in their pocket, right? Yeah. So it's not like you're going to go out and be a professional photographer unless you're really good. You know, I'm sure people do it, and and I'm grateful that they're out there but for me it was one that it was just always a wonderful hobby and so I'm like okay I can create the cover no problem so I do that I go into Kindle and it's like oh it has to be in this format it has to be of this size and I'm going oh no <laughs> here, here we are again the next you know, it's like I can pass that description and now I need a cover hurdle uh, after hurdle after uh, hurdle that you have to jump through Exactly. And, and it's one where luckily there's, you know, there's lots of stuff on YouTube. So if you're, if you're having issues creating a cover, you know, look on YouTube for different, different article articles out there. Uh, for me, it was one that with the book itself, I wanted it to be something where there was printing on the spine, right? I'm, yeah. I'm showing you now, just so you can see, I, I wanted that. I wanted that look and feel of, of a real book, right? I didn't want a pamphlet. And, and so for that, it, number one, had to be so many characters. But then when you go to put that as the book cover for, for the print direct version that they have, you have to actually space it out inside of that image template that you get. And that was something that was kind of, you know, it was kind of interesting for me working on it. Yeah. Um, there's software to help you. You know, I use the GIMP is the name of it. It's, it's a free editor similar to Photoshop. Uh, because I was trying to, you know, do this, you know, on, on my own and to save money where I could. Um, so, so, so once we had the cover, once we had had it in Kindle, you know, and, and, and uploaded it, they take a few days to approve it, you know, to make sure that, you know, there's not copyright material in there and other stuff. And, and, and it, it was live. And I'm like, wow, my, my, my book is out there. And so I, I go on Facebook and Twitter to all my friends, you know, which probably like 30 people and say, go. <laughs> and and you, know, you, you don't get as many downloads as you think you're going to, even from your friends. Yes. And I, I'm like, gee, maybe my friends can't read. I don't know. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> and and so, so that's why I started thinking about the Audible. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding on that. But, uh, but it was one where I then as an indie author had to go, wait a second. I need to market this thing. How do I do that? Where do I go? And of course, there's lots of people that for $49.99 will, will, will send me through a seminar to tell me how to do all of this stuff. But you look at it, you look at the reviews of them, and, and I just, I wasn't impressed. So, so I went, went to YouTube, went to Google, did, did all the searches and, and, and found that, you know, some of the things that work best for marketing is, you know, the correct hashtags. So sending out the hashtags on, hey, this is a Kindle Unlimited book. So you can get it for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. Uh, sending out, you know, posting in the horror channels and things like that. Uh, and also not just posting in Twitter or Facebook, but, you know, Instagram and others, right? You have to figure out what channels work best for you. Um, so, so that process was something to learn. And, and for me, that's one that I'm ongoing, you know, tweaking that a little bit, right? What works better? Uh, in fact, recently I found a website called later.com and for free, you can post uh, 
you, know, you can schedule posts for, for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And since I do have a full-time job and I'm not Twittering and, and Facebooking in the middle of the day, tweeting, if you will, and Facebooking in the middle of the day, with this, you can actually schedule them to go out at, at certain times. And lo and behold, you know, like 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. for some reason are very, you know, there's a lot of people on Twitter at those times. You'd think they'd all be at work, but oh well. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, because I was thinking lunchtime. And so with this, you can schedule all of these different, you know, not broadcasts, but messages to go out at specific times. And what's great is you create it and you can send it out to different channels. You can have up to three channels for free. So all of that's for free. Now, if I, if I start making money, maybe I pay and I can have more than 30 per channel right. per month. Or I just keep doing what I'm doing, which which I, I really like that 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 website. Uh, so again, it's just figuring out what works for you and figuring out you know what works for others by you know going to Twitter and stuff like that. And we can talk about that when you're ready as well. What's the one recommendation that you would give to someone who's looking at potentially publishing a book and thinking, okay, I I hear what David's gone through. I don't want to go through what David's gone through. What is the best case to get me from point A to point Z without all the headaches that David seems to have gone through? Buy my book. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) 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 $49.99. And your firstborn, no, uh, no. Uh, I am a horror author after all. But no, it's. Uh, I think that the best advice I've got is 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 actually two words: don't rush. That that I think was my problem. Is that you know? In fact, the the very first version of the book that's available that was available in print actually has a few Easter eggs in it now because the second version's out. Uh, there were a few things that I did not catch in the editing process. And, and I'm not talking as far as grammar wise and stuff like that. I mean, like, you know, there, there's a character in there whose family tree has no branches. Uh, so, so I corrected that in any version you get now. It's corrected on all of it. But, it but at the same time, the first edition of the book has got to be worth a shitload of money oh, now yeah, because yeah. it has so many things in it that the second edition <laughs> doesn't. Exactly. And, it, and it's little things like, like there's one scene where people hop in their Jeep and they're driving down the road in their Mustang. And I'm going, wait a second here. <laughs> you know, and until I, you know, I, I actually, I caught that during the editing process with Audible. Uh, as I'm listening to it, and he's like, yeah, I got in the truck and I'm driving down the road in the Mustang. And I'm going, wait a second here. When did he switch vehicles? What's going on here? And, oops. You know, <laughs> yeah, oops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so little Easter eggs like that are in, in there. Uh, there's a couple fun Easter eggs that I put in there. Uh, my, my mom's last name in my family uh, is, is Madigan on that side of the family. Okay. And so, so one of the, the, the sheriff in there, Sheriff Madigan, that was just a throwback to the name, just, just for family to see if anybody catches it. Uh, when uh, on my third book that, that, that I, I wrote, I actually threw a, <laughs> threw a line in there where somebody saw a free bit Britney bumper sticker on the car. <laughs> just, just, I was listening to the radio <laughs> And, and I heard somebody mention Free Britney and all this stuff. And I'm going, you know, wouldn't that be fun just to throw that in there as they've got the bumper sticker? So, so I, I do have a, a shout out to Britney Spears. So hopefully she's a fan. There you go. Britney buy his book. There you go. Exactly. For $49.95. Um, let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about the book a little bit here because uh, uh, I, I think we've talked about publishing, but we should be talking about the book because it is your first book that you've published. Uh, keep in the light. Uh I, I'm going to ask this question and we've alluded to beforehand that it has a little bit of uh, things that happened to you in the past, but uh, before we do that, I, I want to preempt that by saying it, to read this book, I, you need to understand one thing, shadows. Explain to me how this book came about and why shadows are so scary to you. So, so for me, I, I was a sickly kid. In fact, I was one of the kids that, uh, you know, they had what they called the croup back then, who knows what they call it now. And so I was in, I was in a tent inside of a, a crib, if you will, where it was lots of moist air coming in and all this kind of stuff. 
And one of the things I remember was he was watching scary movies with, with my mom during the day. And because I, I liked them. So anytime something was on, you know, they had those different UHF channels and stuff like that, that you could barely watch. And so, so watching all those were just, just wonderful. And for me, the way shampoos came about is I also used to run high fevers. So in fact, in the, in the forward of the book or in the preface of the book, you know, that story, some of that happened to me where the kid okay. was sick in the bed. You know, I had, you know, probably 105, 106 temperature. And at the time you couldn't just go to urgent care, right? They, you had to go to the real hospital and all that stuff. And it was, you know, 40 minutes away, what have you, maybe longer. And and you didn't just go to the hospital. Most of the time it was, oh, did you try this? <laughs> let's, let's give them a hot toddy, give them this. And so, so for me, it was one that, you know, I was running about 105 temperature and, and they were getting ready to give me an ice bath where basically you put somebody in ice until their fever goes down and then you drive to the hospital as fast as possible. Uh, I'm not a doctor or anything, so I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying that's what was done to me as a kid and I lived through it. Uh, so, and my fever did go down. Um, so anyway, so before that, you know, I, I, I look in my, in my, in my, I was in my parents' room and I'm laying on the bed and I look to the left and I see this shadow looking at me and I swear to you, it looked exactly like the shadow of a man. And it even had on a hat like Abe Lincoln used to wear, you know, whatever, whatever those top hats are called. Right. And so it had that type of hat on is what I saw. And granted, I had 105, 106 temperature. So I'm just prefacing that again. So the men in white coats don't come out and grab me. Uh, and but beside him was, was someone else, you know, another shadow. Uh, didn't have a face, didn't have red eyes or anything like that. Just was a sh the shadow outline of a person. And I swear to you, it, it, turned and walked over to the side and walked into the wall and disappeared. And, and, and I told my mom about it. I'm like, I just saw a shadow. You know, and of course, you know, no, didn't believe me saying, you know, here, get in the bath. Right. And I was probably around seven, maybe eight at the time. And so it was something that that always affected me. Now, whether that was a real shadow person, because if you look and search for shadow people on the internet, there's a lot of research and things like that. In fact, I, I had a lot of fun in researching different things for the book, you know, based on that. Um, or whether it was just that I had 104, 105 temperature and a car was driving by reflection off of the headlight, who knows? You know, I could have even been, you know, half asleep at the time as far as for, you know, how you nod in and out when you're running yeah. fever. Uh, so what really caused it, I don't know. But the detail and the fact that the, the, the one had the hat, you know, really stuck with me. So years later, I have my MP3 player hooked in my car. And uh, because I was back, you know, way, way back when. Uh, and, and I'm listening to Coast to Coast AM from their, their, their podcast at the time or their show recordings where you can download them on MP3. And I was listening to an older one that had Art Bell on it. And he was talking about shadow people. And right as he goes into the commercial, he's like, and it's strange how the one's always wearing a hat. And I swear to God, I almost wrecked the car. And because and it just brought it all, all streaming back. So when we were talking about ghost stories and stuff like that from the family, you know, and, and we're just, when I say talking, we're, we're texting back and forth, right, over Instant Messenger. And, 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 and I said, yeah, in fact, I had something that, you know, maybe happened or maybe didn't happen to me when I was a kid. So, and I, and that's what I started telling her about it and said, I always wanted to write a book, you know, based on it. So there's a lot of legends of what shadow people are. Uh, there's even things called shadow spiders and shadow snakes. Uh, there, there are things that, that people believe, you know, some of them believe that they're actually sucking their energy away and that nothing good happens to them because of the shadows. Uh, there's, there's people that believe that the shadows actually give others power either over them or give them, you know, like good luck almost. And, but the problem is with that, there's a price at the end when you die, right? And that you yeah. might actually be that person standing beside the shadow. So for me, that's how my sort of fascination with shadow people and shadow creatures came about. But the fascination, it translated to such an amazing story as you're listening as i was listening to it and as the my uh, i would recommend my listeners to go out and buy the book or even download it on audible uh, or buy it on audible um you tell a story with so much detail 
that it makes me feel like you and I and I, I would say this with uh, with some reluctance because I, I don't want to speak for you, but you you seem to uh, write it in a way that you believe it. Did you actually believe it when you were writing this? Because as I listened to it, I was like, wow, this guy is describing it in so much good detail that I, I, I there's no way that he doesn't believe what he's writing. Yeah, yeah, and 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 for me, it's one that you know I don't disbelieve anything. When it comes to that, uh, I I have only seen that when I had a you know the shadow as far as when I had a really high fever. So I can't say whether it was true or not and all that good fun stuff. I wish that I would see something you know now. I, I would love it if you know all of it was real, right? And, you know, Bigfoot was real, <laughs> yeah, whatever, and any of that kind of stuff. I would really really love that. Uh, when it when it comes to the shadows themselves. You know, when you start thinking about, you know, if it's real, you know, if, if there is a shadow creature, if there's, you know, not something in the shadows, but the shadows themselves, you know, you're, you're looking, you know, behind your desk now and you see a little shadow from, from your monitor. What if that's not just a shadow? What if it's something getting ready to grab you? Uh, what if you're getting ready to throw trash in a dumpster and, and that darkness isn't just, you know, darkness, it's something else. Uh, you know, and, and, and when I, when I thought of the story and, and really when I say what I thought of the story, it's, they, they come to me, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, writing where I'm going to say, okay, now I'm going to write a chapter about the guy in the convenience store, which I love that character. I, I love that guy. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to, to do that. I'm writing this as it comes to me about shadows. So as far as do I believe it or not, the answer is yes, I believe it all. I just wish I would see it, see something that said the other side is there and, you know, hopefully they're not all evil, but that's a different story. Does that, does that answer? What, what it does answer my question. Um, this is like, it's like we said before, and this is your first book that you've published um, putting pen to paper and deciding that you were going to write a story about these shadow creatures, people, was it a challenge for you? Because there is speculation out there that this could be unreal, this could be real. But as a, in the horror genre, it works. It works in this sense that it, when you listen to this book, when you read this book, it works. So was there speculation of this is going to be my first outing and I'm okay with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I was totally okay with, with it the entire way. The the first, the, the, the preface, if you will, that was the easiest chapter for me to write. Because I, I'm sitting there, and and and, and unlike the other books that, that are going to be coming out, you know that one I sat down to specifically write about shadow people, and I didn't want to make them more people-like, if that makes sense. So that's why it's more of a creature in the book. Now, whether yeah. it changes over time, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll buy the second book, uh, yeah. <laughs> and 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 but the the way things things work with it, you know, it's more of a creature. So that you know that first one. I love that. Uh, the one song that's mentioned in there, you know, I, I, I do have metal in my background as far as first things I like to listen to. And, and, and that song song just it was something that always, you know, was, I would crank it up when it would turn on. Right. So so all of that sort of played into uh, into the story. It was very easy to, to write when when I got to chapter one. And I sat down, I'm going, okay, now where do I go from here? Because the preface is sort of something that happens in the past. I, you know, I'm not ruining anything in the story by saying that it, it happens before. And so then I'm sitting there going, okay, now we know the shadow creatures are there. We know they're evil, but what do they do? You know, do they just go around and kill random people? Do they hunt specific people? And, and that's where I, I really had fun with thinking of what they do. And then I just wanted to tell the story of Lucky. You know, and, and she's a conglomeration of a bunch of people I've known over the years and a and, and, and bunch of families that I've known over the years. And I tried to do, you know, my, my editor said, you know, this is really a coming of age story, if anything. <laughs> and I'm going, no, it's, it's horror. I'm sorry. <laughs> but but uh, you could say it is coming of age. It's somebody trying to decide, you know, trying to, to find love, trying to find, you know, mix, uh, uh, somewhere in between family that's, you know, more rural and more country. You know, they were farmers. Yeah. And she's going to a big college, right? So how does she, she, you know, put all those two things together? So, so, 
you know, and then her life is further complicated by the supernatural entities. <laughs> and so <laughs> it makes it just a little bit, little bit tough. One area that I want to talk about is the actual writing style. Um, what's the hardest part? What was the hardest part for this book? Was it character development or was it the actual story? Because A, the character development in the book is amazing. Uh, you write characters so well and you are able to tell their stories from the young girl, from the grandfather to everyone. You're able to tell and I, I, I connect it with them. And that was is so hard as an author. Um, but also the story flows so well that you just keep on wanting to listen to more. So what was the hardest part from your author's perspective to writing this story? For me, the, the character development I think the hardest part of the character development was I liked some of the characters and I knew that it wasn't going to end well for them. And, and so I kept, I almost think I procrastinated a couple of times. So I'm telling <laughs> more about them than just, just say, okay, here's, sorry, dude, you're, you're no longer in the story. You know, it, oops. It, oops. <laughs> in fact, I put it out on Twitter one night. I'm like, you know, I really feel bad for killing this guy, but he shouldn't have been in a horror <laughs> story. He should have picked some other story to be in, you know? Yes. <laughs> You, know, you should have picked a love story. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so yeah. So for me, it, it's one where, as I said, it's it's. I'm lucky that the stories flow into me, right? Where where they come from, you know, cre creativity, what have you. I, I don't know. Uh, the part that I know I worked the hardest at, and and I do appreciate you saying that that you liked it, was the character development, because not only did you know was I procrastinating killing them, but I wanted to make sure that every character in the story had a point because a lot of times where I'm writing and I'm reading other people's work, you know, there'll be characters you can tell are throwaway characters. And, and even, even some of the characters that aren't in my, in my stories very long, you know, they have, they have an impact on you. I mean, even yeah. in that first chapter with that, that guy who was, who was bothering Lucky, you know, that's something that, you know, you, you're, you're invested in that person. Right. And, 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 and so I really like that. Uh, my, my editor likes the way I foreshadow in some of it. And, and in fact, when she was telling me, you know, some, some of the things in the reviews, I'm going, Oh, that's what it's called. <laughs> I didn't know. You know <laughs> I have no real training. I, I failed English three times in my life. Uh, so, so I am not a, a quote unquote writer by trade, if you will, I'm more of a storyteller. Is, is the way I like to phrase it. And, and as luck would have it, you know, as, as we started comparing my style to others, she said, well, Stephen King writes the same way. He, he doesn't, he supposedly doesn't know where things are going until it happens as well, is at least what he, what he said in something. So I'm like, okay, that, that makes me feel better that I'm not just the only guy out there going, okay, can something please beam in my head for the next chapter? <laughs> well, and that's an excellent point because you, for your first time, this is a horror film. This is a horror book. You you have written it in a way that would resemble the Stephen King era, but also in a unique way that it's your own. Um, when you finish this book, and we'll, we'll talk, we'll actually, before we actually even ask that question, we haven't actually asked the question of this. Explain to my listeners what the book is about. Explain to them why this book is so important today and why people should go out and get it. Well, you know, that's similar to that whole Amazon publishing thing. The description. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to. So why should describe the book in 150 characters for me? <laughs> so it's a coming of age, like, and actually talking about it and describing it verbally is probably easier than it definitely easier than, than writing it down. Yeah. So, so for me, it's, you know, I wanted to start a series. So, and that's what this is. So there, there is a second book. Each book has its own main bad, bad entity, if you will, bad person, what have you. So, so it's not like it's, you know, the next one's going to be strictly about shadow people and shadow creatures. Uh, and in fact, we'll talk about the, the different kinds here in a second. Uh, but it's, it's one where 
the book itself, it's a standalone book. So there's a beginning, middle and end. I'm not going to leave you on a cliffhanger or anything like that. So I'll, I'll promise that. Uh, it's, it's a book about a, a young lady who has a strong family bond. She is trying to decide whether she wants to, you know, what her, what her major is going to be in college, what she's going to do, all the same drama that, that every college age kid goes through, right? All the things you have to think of. And, and, and it somehow this supernatural entity, this ancient entity, you know, comes across her and it's something that it's, it's pursuing her. It's, it's similar to that of a shark in the water. You know, there's been a drop of blood. Maybe it's a piece of her soul or, or what have you. But with that drop of blood, that, that entity is now pursuing her. And in that pursuit, it comes across her family. And instead of being just a, a weak family that, 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 that doesn't know what to do or, 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 or has no ideas, this is a very strong family. I mean, you know, from the grandfather all the way to her father and to her, her, her crazy uncle, right? All of them are people who are doers. They're not just the people that are going to say, oh, I'm sorry, you're being, you know, there, there's something strange going on. Let's get you, let's check you into a mental ward and, and, yeah. and they'll, they'll help you, you know, you know, and, and so it, I didn't want to go that route because there's too many movies and books that have that. And as the story was, was coming out, you know, and I'm, I'm writing it, it, it is about that family bond and the fact that there's trust. The family trusts her. So when she says something's going on, they don't say, oh, that's your imagination. It's, hey, this is going on. We're going to figure out a way to try to help you. And so it is a supernatural thriller as much as it is, is a horror story. And it, it is about shadow people and shadow creatures. And it's something that I'm, I'm very proud of, of what I produced. So, so, and I do thank you for having me on today too. Yeah. One of the uh, uh, biggest things that uh, as I was listening to the book, you write from a woman's perspective as from a girl's perspective so well, but you're a male white. <laughs> how, how were you able to develop a woman's character so well? And, and I would not just ask you this, if I would ask JK Rowling this, if mm -hmm. I was talking about her with Harry Potter, but writing from a female's perspective, was that the first point you were going to do when you sat down and wrote this book? You said it has to be from a woman's perspective or was it back and forth saying, okay, Lucky might be a man, might be a woman. It, it could be either way. No, that's a great question. So, so for me, Lucky, I knew the name of the character when I sat down and, and, yeah. and I wrote Lucky. And from then I'm like, okay, let's see where this goes. And as it turned out, Lucky, Lucky was a female. Uh, and, and it's something that as far as for me writing from that perspective, I've always had strong women in my life, whether it be, you know, my mom, my wife, you know, my daughter, you know, all of those have been strong, strong women. So, so when it turned out that Lucky was a woman, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't the typical, she's running away from the monster type story. I wanted it to be something where, you know, the monster pisses her off and she wants to kill it, right? You know, it's, it's, it's not something where she just wants to get away. It's, hey, there's, there's, some, there's bad things happening. We're going to get through this. I mean, I can remember my mom when, when, when I was a kid, you know, she was one of the strongest people I knew. In fact, she, she worked at a very sketchy area at one point and she carried an ice pick. So, so, so it's, not, it's something of, you know, you, you do what needs to be done, you know, and, and so I wanted to have that come out in the book and, and thank you for saying that as far as for, for, for how you, you, you interpreted what I wrote, you know, from her perspective, it, 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 it was, it was very interesting. And, and, and it's one that, you know, I had a good time writing, writing that way. Uh when you finished this book for the first time, uh, you had gotten it down on paper. Uh, I'm assuming you are your harshest critic when it comes to editing, when it comes to coming up with ideas. And you, you, we talked about it briefly beforehand, but you said you rushed to publish this. Yes. Looking at that moment when you had finished the first draft, was this the book that you had set out to write? Was it the book that you said, you know what, this is exactly the way that my, my, so, and I'm going to say this nicely, my messed up brain, because there are parts in it when you go, okay, the guy just shit himself <laughs> <laughs> that you go, this is the book I wanted to write. Yeah. Uh, can I say the story is what yes. I wanted to write? 
Okay. The story is exactly what I wanted to write. Now, the grammar inside of it, there, there might have been a few things in the first story. Yes, please forgive me, anybody out there that's the grammar police. You know, follow me on Twitter. You'll see worse because my editor doesn't touch those. Uh, <laughs> so, so, I, I think social media has no editor, so therefore <laughs> anyone has the right to just write whatever they want, however they want. Exactly. It's like, is no one two words or one word? I don't know. Let me use both. <laughs> And, 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 and so, you know, my, my editor, one of the things she jokes about, she goes, I just wish that you're, you would be consistent in some of the things that you use, <laughs> like even okay. Sometimes I spell it okay, a Y or yep. okay. And both are correct, but it, it should be consistent. So the, the, the reader doesn't be, isn't pulled from the story. That's an advantage you've got because you heard it. So in the, in, in the hearing of it, you just hear, okay, it's not, yeah. it's not different. Uh, so yeah, the story is exactly what I wanted to get out. Uh, after I did do those those few edits, the 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 grammar and the writing is 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 something I could definitely be proud of, and I, and I'm glad I got it out. Uh, when I say we rushed, it was one where I think it could have used one more pass through to check for some of those consistencies. Like I said, there's there was a scene in the in the in the book where they they hop in a Mustang. And then I want to say it goes to the back of the truck to pull something out of it or whatever it was. And I'm going, okay, that was just inconsistent. In fact, when uh, on, I want to say my fourth book, there's a big fight scene. And it's one that I had to actually map it out on paper like I was playing D&D on how many people were still alive, how many bullets <laughs> they had, and or rounds for anybody who that way you know how many yeah. rounds they had what have you because i didn't want to be one of those authors where it's oh he fired 15 shots from his six shot revolver <laughs> you know? so so yes i'm very very proud of what we produced uh and, and especially from the second additional one there's you know it, it, it's one where I, I hope people read it and love it so uh where can people find the book because that's the, i guess to to properly do your due diligence of marketing where can people buy the book Okay, you can get it at, at Amazon on Audible. Is what, excuse me, you can get it from Amazon. Just search for Keep in the Light. Uh, and if the way you have to search on Amazon sometimes is put quotes in, you know, quotes around everything you want to say in one word. So Keep in the Light is the name of the, story, is the, name of the book. Uh, the series will also be called that. It's also available at keepinthelight.com. And it's available you know, on print direct. So you can get a hard copy of it. You can have the electronic copy on your Kindle devices, your phone, what have you. And it's also available on iTunes. Uh, one of the publishing things I wanted to give out to, to other authors is I used a company called acx.com to do the audible version. And Andy McCain, who I found there is, is, is the producer did an amazing job. I mean, you you heard his voice. Wasn't that just amazing how he it was. made the characters come to life? Um, for my listeners, I will have links to buy Keeping the Light uh, from Amazon.ca and .com. I will also link the Audible and the keepingthelight.com website in the show notes. So uh, go to the links, buy it, because it is an amazing book. Um, as we're literally at the about 45 minute, 50 minute mark here. Uh, I want to talk about the series though. Yes. Uh, you are now into, uh, we will be releasing book two. This is going to be coming out in September. So I'm assuming book two will be released by September. I am hoping we are on the last round of edits and, 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 and everything's looking good so far. And, and book two is called Whispers of Grey. And whereas the first book deals with supernatural creatures, you know, the shadow, shadow creatures, the second book is more about possession and demons. And it's one that uh, there's, there's a character in it who, who gets run over and he swears and would swear that, that he knew the person that ran him over. And so it's something of trying to go through and solve that mystery of what's going on is, is was very, very fun. Um, it's, it's something that, you know, as I'm writing these books, the first one with the shadow people. And like you said, some guy, some guy does shit himself. Uh, so it's, it does happen in the book. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and in whispers of gray where it's, 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 you know, demons and things like that, killing people, which is pretty, pretty horrible. I, I will admit that. Uh, the third book that I'm working on is, uh, that'll be coming out as well is, is called bad humans. And that's a book where somebody gets the ability to see the most evil, heinous thing that someone has done. 
and they, they see it from their perspective and they feel it. So if a person desired to see blood, what have you, they, they feel all of those things that that evil person felt. But then they also feel it from their victim's perspective. And for me, that was one that was the hardest thing to sort of recover from after writing, because I would write a couple of those chapters that were very evil, bad stuff was going on. And I'm like, man, I need a shower, you know? <laughs> so, so it was, um, it, it's been good, but, but those, those three books, uh, and I've, I've written the fourth in the series already. So everything's, you know, teed up to be coming out live. Uh, so it's not a series where you're going to get into and only have one book. Uh, but in each book, my goal is there's a beginning, middle, and end. So they're all standalone stories. There's just something that sort of is, is following along through all of them. If you were a Supernatural fan, you know, you know how they do those where there's one-shot stories, but there's sort of an overriding, you know, story arch that's going on. So that's what's happening so far in, in these books. I, I had prepped you for this question in our last uh, preview uh, interview of last week, but I'm going to ask this question. Um, Keep the light in, whispers of gray, bad humans. You've explained the story behind them. You have one sick mind, man. Where does it come from? <laughs> well, I, I think I, the voices in my head tell me that my mind's okay. And so, so I think that, uh, think that I'm okay according to them uh, when they're talking to me. You know, it's kind of bad sometimes the voices in your head are refusing to talk to you and they're just talking to each other. Um, no, it's... Uh, I think for me, in all honesty, I have to thank my mother uh, when, when, you know, she did not say, no, you can't watch that horror movie. You're too young for it. What have you? I, I really think that's where it, it, it got my love of horror. And I can remember reading, you know, Stephen King and different ones, you know, you know, way early in life and and I didn't like to read but I would still still read those and, and watching the old tv shows and stuff like that you know Frankenstein Wolfman Dracula all that kind of stuff even watching the original Salem's Lot made for tv movie you know things like that were, were things that my mom didn't say no you can't watch it now a lot of the times I end up sleeping in between my parents at night <laughs> you know because I did get scared but but I, I really have to thank her for for where where that all that creativity if you will comes from this is, to be honest, this is actually intervention. The men in white coats will be coming to your house in about 10 minutes after <laughs> oh, the interview is done. But you, 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 your mind is such an amazing one because like I said, and I'm going back to keep in the light because this is the only book I've heard and I'm looking forward to Whispers of Grey and uh, Bad Humans to come out here soon. But you, your mind is able to adapt things of the past that you've come up with. So does whispers of gray and bad humans, do, does this represent a little bit of life that happened to you as well? Or are these actual unique stories in itself? Because uh, the keeping the light, like you said, you saw something as a child with a fever. So with these two new books, are they something that you have some connection to as well? Or are these an entity of its own? That's a great question. So when it, when it comes to them, each of them has something, you know, from me. So, so years ago, I was lucky enough to go to Belize. And one of the things I did was I toured the Mayan ruins. And one of the best pictures that, I, that I've ever taken was of a side view of this carved uh, woman's face. And it's just simply beautiful. And that's what's going to be the cover of Whispers of Grey. And it's something where I was, I was thinking about at the time, you know, how much time and effort had to go into creating that and, and what type of person was she? And so when, when this, you know, when I, when I thought of the whispers of gray, I'm like, this is just perfect. You know, it's, it's, it's a entity that's, that's older than time almost. Right. And, and how would it react with different people? And in all of my stories, you know, are people that I knew. You know, I, I, every, every book I've, I've written so far, you know, there's somebody in it. You know, I even have one where, where this poor kid, you know, gets puke on his shoes. And the whole night he's complaining about puke on his shoes at a party. And I went to school with that kid. 
he, he, he it really happened and so 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 everything he's he's like why would somebody puke on your shoes he goes why would they he's like they just he's, he's like it's just rude and and i'm like yeah i know man it's horrible so you know as, as it happened this you know this guy's in, in in one of my books as well so so yeah so i pull a lot of that out of real history but unfortunately, I've, I've not met any, met any other shadow creatures since I was a kid. And, and I've, I've never been possessed by a demon that I know. <laughs> there you go. Um, the last set of questions before, last question before we go into the wrap up here. Um, the three books, the fourth book that you've written, are they all set in the same, and I, I hate to use this word, but universe? Are they, yes. is there a potential of a crossover of the shadow people, of the bad humans, of the uh, uh, the uh, possession that they're all going to come to a blow here? Or is that something that you haven't thought of? Yeah, it's, in, in fact, I've, I've written up to the fifth book so far. And and so they they do come together. The the shadows are in the in the in the second book as well, briefly, uh, and and in the third book, you know, the shadows are pretty prominent in that. Uh, so yeah, they do follow through. Uh, I, I won't say anything about you know who 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 may live or who may die from the first <laughs> book because uh, I'm I'm guilty of that sometimes. But there there will be people that you love that that are in the different ones, you know, maybe briefly. And and I'm I'm planning, and this is the hard part for me is actually planning is to have one where everything's together and and I hate writing when I plan so I, I think I'm just going to have to sit down one night and just let it all come out however it comes out so but yeah that you will meet people that, that go back and forth between the different stories um and actually the the, the next one after that is I, I did get to write a haunted house that was one where I also thought of something I said you know I'm going to write a haunted house so I, I had no other ideas when I sat down to, to do a haunted house. So I do have a haunted house story. Uh, it's codenamed Pity the Dead right now, but I don't know what it'll be eventually. Uh, a lot of these things, I think of titles and then, you know, I, I have to search to see what, what polls well and stuff like that, but it, it's kind of fun. Last question before we wrap up here. Actually, this is the last question before we wrap up because I came, came up with this question as a, you were talking. From the boy who is self-described dyslexic, are you proud of being a known author now that you can say, I have written a book, I have written numerous books that are going to be coming out here. And no matter what challenges that you had in the past, you've overcome them and you are now a published author. I, I'm, I'm very proud. And, and thank you for having me on. Uh, I, I, it, it's something that, you know, as I said, I failed English twice and, or three times. And it, it's something that, you know, I, I always felt bad. In fact, one of the other things just for other indie authors, uh, I wrote a book when I was 16 and, and I had like the first seven chapters done. It was based on D and D. So it was fun. Uh, but it was one where somebody I gave it to that I really respected, you know, made a joke out of how some of the characters were talking and stuff like that. And that impacted me. And I didn't write again for 30 years, uh, 40 years, I guess. Yeah. So, so it's something that don't let those initial critics, you know, you know, keep you from, from doing something that you're enjoying. Uh, you know, find, find other people, find people to help you. You know, if somebody criticizes your work, say, okay, what specifically can I do to make it better? You know, what, what do you want to see? And, and all the stuff you said about my book, as far as for the character development, all that, I mean, that just, I mean, I, I appreciate the heck out of that. Um, before we wrap up, we do have one last thing we want to talk about. Uh, David Muser has, uh, uh, sorry, I pronounced your last name wrong, didn't oh, I? Yeah. Musser uh, has graciously uh, allowed us to give away a audible copy of his book. Uh, for that, we want to thank you, David, for doing that. Uh, but to be entered into the draw to get a copy of Keeping the Light on Audible, all you have to do is share this episode. Share this episode on your Facebook page, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, and it you will be entered. We will be drawing it the week before the Halloween, uh, well, the week before Halloween. So it, it'd be a perfect uh, listen to for the week of Halloween. So David, thank you so much for that. And uh, like I said, share this episode, hit the like, hit the subscribe share it with your friends and every time you share it on twitter instagram or facebook you'll be entered into the draw thank you for that david thank you very much for having me 
No, thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure. Like I said in the uh, in the middle of the episode, uh, keeping the light is now available to download. Uh, I'm assuming by the time this airs, Whispers of Grey will be as well. Uh, we will link keepingthelight.com and the where to buy it on Amazon and Audible in the show notes as well. But where can people follow you? Where can people follow you on social media? I am. Uh, if you, if you go to keepingthelight.com, you'll you'll find me there. But I'm also at DM Web God, David Musser, W E B G O D. Uh, that there's a long story about that. If you have me back sometime, I'll tell you about that name. But I am DM Web God on Twitter. Uh, it, it's 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 a handle that I started to do a little bit of research to switch. But I'm like, you know, I, I've had that handle for ten years now. I guess I'm I'm going to keep it. Uh, so definitely reach out. And then there is a feedback thing on keepingthelight.com for anybody that's got any feedback. And, and definitely if you're supporting indie authors like myself, as you read the book, provide reviews on Amazon, go to the different, different websites and, and provide reviews. It really does help, uh, help, help us and keeps us motivated. Perfect. And for my listeners, uh, the link to his Twitter will also be, I would highly recommend you go and uh, follow him. Uh, David, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you.